Doing something today that I've never ever done before. I've got eight fishing rods out, two crab hoop nets out, and I'm going crabbing, and I'm gonna be fishing all these rods at the very same time. Now in the last video, I went out to Half Moon Bay and I anchored for the first time. So now I feel confident in anchoring, learned a few tricks, learned a few lessons from some of the comments, and I can go out there, confidently anchor, keep my boat in the same position, throw out six to eight crab snares, throw out two hoop nets right next to me, attract all the crab, hopefully get our limit. So there's a bunch of rules for this new 2022 year. Let's go over them in just a little bit. Let's get out there first to the crapping grounds. I'm heading out to the crabbing spot, making sure I don't run over any buoys. But if you're from the Bay Area, you already know crabbing has been delayed for the third year in a row. Crab traps, which are fully enclosed crab cages, are closed to commercial, anglers, and sport fishing. But crab snaring and crab hoop nets are open until at least November 22nd. That's when there will be another reconsideration for reopening the crab season without any restrictions. We're pretty much at the crabbing spot now. I'm about to throw the anchor but before I do, I'm kind of assessing the situation because we got some big swells rolling in, probably about five to six footers. And when this anchor rope is out, I don't know how my boat's gonna act when the anchor is stuck and the boats, the, the waves are pushing me up and down like that. We're in 44 feet of water. I got 200 feet of rope. The rule is you should have a minimum of five times the length of rope to how deep it is. So I should be having at least 220 feet of rope which I don't have, I have 200 feet, but actually I got 20 feet of chain, so that might make up for it. It's gonna be kind of fun, man. Big old swells rolling through. Hopefully I can anchor. There's not much wind, there's not much current, so I'm not too worried. As long as there's no breakers around me, you, I would not want to get stuck with a big breaker while I'm anchored. But, all right, this spot looks decent. This spot looks decent. <laughs> Let me uh, drop the anchor and see how hard it is down there. I also realized I don't need to go to the front to drop the anchor. I can just drop it right here. Okay, I can just drop it right here. And then when it gets to the point where I need to put it in the front, I can. Once it does get stuck, then I can tie it to the front. There's a couple things, the current and the wind. If the current is really strong, oh, are we stuck there? No, not yet. If the current is really strong, that's the way your bow is going to be facing. But if the wind is stronger, whichever the one of the two forces is stronger, that's the way that you're going to be anchored. Another thing, obviously, this is this could be dangerous. So only do this if you know what you're doing. Don't do it so close to shore where the breakers are going to happen. Don't do it if it's really rough. If it does get rough, make sure that you have your engine on before you pull the anchor, just in case your engine doesn't start for whatever reason. Also, if it starts getting super choppy and windy and your anchor is tight, that could be a recipe for disaster because your bow could dip into the ocean and you know that could be the end of everything. So be extra, extra careful. Anchor rope is down. This is how much rope we got left. So we're pretty much using it all. Now I'm gonna throw some bait in the crab hoop nets and drop her down. Now, I'll, another thing with the new crab trap regulations, you have to buy two buoys. You have to have a completely red one and you also have to have a four and a half or five inch small one on top. But if you're using hoop nets, you can still use the good old laundry detergent cans or you can use any flotation device that you want, which I don't know, it still doesn't really make sense to me why the separate rules, but hey, um, it is what it is. I'm gonna put some bait in here and drop her down. All my crab snares, all seven of them for later. Let's get these hoop nets down first. A bunch of old squid I have left over. I'm gonna throw all of this into one hoop net. Let's drop her down, first one going in. Of course, you got the leaded line so the rope sinks. I'm just gonna tie my, my rope that I use to hold my boat onto shore. I'm just gonna tie it onto this rope. 
then I can just pull the rope together later. All right, buoy number one, we in. I know people usually don't use this, but I'm just using whatever the heck I had in my old freezer. I have some old Thomas original English muffins that I haven't eaten and they're all bad now. So this is gonna break apart nicely in the water. Have a little extra chum down there. So I'll start off with a little breakfast sandwich. And here's a chunk of, I don't know what this is. I think this is old, old yellowtail from Mexico, maybe two years ago. Most likely not gonna eat it. So it looks like it's all bloodied up. That should work nicely also. Ooh, we got two pieces ready to go. Another thing I do like to have is a knife. I like to keep it right on me. Like what if I need to cut that anchor rope? I, I'm ready to go, I got it, okay? So, a little fish in there. And I'll also put some salmon roe just to get that scent and that fat out there too. You know, I take, it's, it's called quells, K-W-E-L-L-S. That's what I take for motion sickness. And if I didn't take that, then there's no way in the world I would be able to be out here enjoying myself, crabbing, looking down, setting up the nets and stuff. No way. So that's my recommendation if you get seasick. Quells. Number two going in. It's 8.50. We'll check those every 15 minutes. Now let's do the snares. All right, y'all. With the snares, I'm gonna do six angles. One in front here, one straight out here, one to the back, another one off this side, one over here straight across, and one over there. And we got six snares. We're gonna check each one every six minutes. So we'll check one every single minute. We'll be checking the crab hoops. This is gonna be a very active day. Crab snare, number one, going in, hiya! Boom. Give it a little bit of slack. All right, there we go. Fishing there. Next one. I guess since I'm fishing so many rods, it's a good time to talk about the regulations for that. There are unlimited rods you could use for crabbing. There are unlimited rods you could use for fishing for halibut if you're fishing for halibut in the ocean. So if I wanted to, I could fish 20 rods. If I wanted to, I could fish 20 rods for crab, for crab. But I think six is a good medium for one person on a boat anchored alone in the middle of the ocean. I think six is a good medium. I do know that there have been squid around here recently. So having this squid as bait should be what these crab are eating. It's not gonna be any surprise to them. Crab snare number two. This is my first time using a 12 foot rod on a boat too. Good times. Hi ya! Hi ya! Hi ya! Hi ya! Oh, I already have one over there. Oops. That's okay. That's close enough. All right, should we do one more? The last one? We might as well, right? I mean, we're out here. We brought everything. We might as well do one more. All right, let's do one more. Six snares out after this. Hiya! Nice, nice, let's do it. All right, it's 10 o'clock, so it's only been 10 minutes. All right, I think this is gonna be a good amount of rods to have. All right, it's been 15 minutes. First, I wanna to try to pull this hoop net. Pulling these, these ropes, especially this leaded line, is really tough on your hands, so if you bring along some gloves, it helps a lot. All right, y'all, let's see. First pull of the year, here we go. Let's do it fast so the crabs don't pull out, don't fall out. Here it is. Oh, a bunch of tiny little ass crabs. Tiny ones. It's not what we want. All right, this was the first snare. Let's check this one. Tighten up the drag. Reel it in. Get it tight, kinda. Nothing on this one. Nothing on that one, let's cast it again. Nothing on this one. <sighs> nothing. No, nothing. Something is definitely eating the bait though. Probably small crab. Nope. Dang. Okay, that feels like a crab. I think we got one here. I think we got one. Is it a good size? 
That's the question, y'all. One for six. Are we one for six? It feels heavy. Unless I got snagged on something. It feels heavy though. What do we have here? What do we have here? We got a crab? Or are we snagged on something? No, we got a crab. And it looks like a good one. It's a keeper. Woo! Yeah, baby. Look at that. We don't even need to measure that one. Look at that. Yeah, snaring. One on the board. Six, six snares. And it was straight towards shore. All right, let's throw them in the live well. Turn on the water. Yeah, baby. Now let's pull this next hoop up. Bunch of small ones. Bunch of small ones. My English muffin is still there. I was about to give up hope, but we're gonna stick it out. One crab in six minutes. And this snare only has five snares, one broke off. I'm gonna catch a couple smelt. And with those smelt, if I want to, I could fish for halibut or I could use those smelt as bait. It's a much more natural bait for the crab. So let's see if I can pick one up. Sometimes with this sabiki, I like to pop it up real fast and that just gets the attention of the fish. After I do that, then they should gather around it. There's one. That's a nice one. I could use that for bait, that's for sure. Yeah, that, that could, oh, just broke my leader, man. That's all right. But hey, I could cut this, I could cut that smelt up and use them for bait. I'll throw them in live well for now. 10.30, we got one crab. We've been at it for about 40 minutes. I guess that's not too bad. I'm gonna pull up the hoop nets and I'm gonna pull up the snares one more time. We got that one smelt. I'm gonna throw the smelt in all the snares just by chunks. Uh, try here for one more round and if we get something, then we'll stay. If we don't, we're gonna change spots. Ooh, nice. God, nice one here on the hoop net. All right, man. No doubt that's a keeper too. And that's a nice jumbo male. Woo, heck yeah. Into the bucket she goes. Nice. That was on the bread and the English muffin. Uh, yeah. Nope. Actually, maybe. We might have one. I think we do. Oh no, I just got my other snare, I think. I don't know, it feels hella heavy though. Probably just the snare. What do we have here, man? What's going on? Oh, oh, a shark. We got a shark, y'all. Hey, we got a shark. We got a shark in the house. Shark was snared. Ah, crazy ass shark, man. I don't want you. That's a small thresher, right? Or no, I don't know what this thing is. Definitely don't want that, man. What kind of shark is that? Rah! Ah! <laughs> Little guy, all right, I'll see you later, little sharky. Now stay away from me. Sorry if that was a little disrespectful, but these sharks are so damn hardy. And look, this crab snare is completely empty, y'all. Look at this crab snare. See, it's completely empty. This is one of the ones that I found at low tide and it's got half inch hardware cloth on it. But you would think that that hardware cloth is so thin that nothing could take the bait out but definitely is and I bet it's those small little crabs so now I'm casting everything real close keeping it close to the net keeping it close to the nets because that's kind of where the biggest scent is so I'm hoping that that's attracting all the crabs I'm just kind of dropping these around all right I just got this smelt here I'm going to dispatch him y'all might not want to see this but I'm just going to cut his head right here okay his spine is cut that's going to be bait. I'm going to cut it in chunks. It's still got blood in it, so that's perfect. Man, another little shark here. Ah, crazy, y'all. I think I got one, y'all. <laughs> Unless it's a shark again. Definitely got something big. Might be two of them. What do we got here? Don't come off, whatever it is. Don't come off, man. Gotten like all my keepers over here on this side. Whatever this is, it feels good. It feels good. 
Oh, it's small. Dang, just a female with eggs. Good size. Ow, wow, he pinched me, man. I don't think I've ever been pinched by a crab here before. That's how a female with eggs looks right there. Those are all its eggs. Now, what if I just ate all these eggs? I wonder if people would be mad. Probably, probably tastes really good. All right, I'll see you later, little girl. Yo, this is a workout. I changed spots. All my bales are open because we're still figuring out what position exactly we're going to be anchoring in. All my bales are open because I want those snares to stay in one place and attract those crabs. Two crabs so far. It's 11.25. It's been about seven minutes since we casted our first snare at this new spot. So I think it's about time we pull it up and try to get our limit now. Let's get every single rod with the, with the crab and then a couple crabs per hoop and we're done. We're done. Let's see if we can do this right now. Ah, uh, bale's been open. Let's see what we got. This was the first one we casted at this new spot. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's see if anybody's home. Ah, oh, no, not yet. Damn, we got a new smelt in there too. You know, I don't really don't need to check it. You know, I could just pull it up and if there's no crab on there, I could just set it back down again. No need to bring it all the way in. I think that's what I'm gonna do from now on. All right, leaving the bale, leaving all these bales open. Let's throw out all these little crabs that got stuck here. All right, next one. I need some luck, you guys. Come on, give me some luck from home. Nope. Dang. Well, we're not having the most luck with this anchor snaring hoop netting technique yet. But if we were in, a right, in the right spot, I think it would be on fire. And the good thing about it is you can travel anywhere you want to on a calm day like this. I feel so confident in anchoring and it's nice just to chill with the motor off. You don't waste any gas. You got the potential to catch a lot of crab and there's smelt all around the boat. If I wanted to fish for halibut, totally could. In fact, now that we're only fishing four rods, I'm gonna jig up a few more smelt and use those as crab bait. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, baby. Yes, that's what I needed right now. That's what I'm talking about. That's a keeper, that's a keeper. Now just stay on here. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Pulling the boat too. Let's go. Let's go. There he is, that's a nice one. Oh, he's barely snared. Oh, is that a keeper or not? That's close. That is close, but we found him, y'all. We found some crab. Oh, that's a close one. That's close, y'all. Is that a keeper? Is that a keeper? Oh, it's just short, just short. No. I don't want him near my hoops, so I can throw him over there. Dang, I thought that was a keeper for sure. Shoot, man. That hurts. That hurts. Yeah, Man. Another shark. These sharks are such a nuisance. What kind of shark is that anyway? I don't think it's a good sign though. I think we're gonna head back real close to the harbor now. Let's bring all these back in. Just shark after shark. Another spot. We're anchored up again. Four rods out, two crab hoops. Two crabs so far. Kind of slow, kind of slow. Still fun, but we're not giving up hope yet. It's only 11.50, we still got two more hours to fish. Two rock crab. I mean, it's big, but I don't want a rock crab. Might be in the wrong spot getting rock crab. Back by the harbor, last chance. We anchored three times already. This is gonna be the fourth. 30 feet deep, got about 100 feet out on the chain, on the anchor. Boom. We stuck. Now let's tie it up. Been about 12 minutes for the snares. I'm gonna pull these. I'm gonna let the hoops stay a little bit longer. I'm still convinced that this snare thing and anchoring thing would work really well. You just gotta find the crab. 
Now I'm kind of in a cove here. The jetty, the harbor is right in front of me. The beach is right over there. So it's kind of blocked off on this corner. So I'm hoping all the crab are trying to get into the harbor, but they get stuck around here. Let's find out. Nope, not on that one. Man, can't get nothing, nothing. Small, small crab. I don't even think this is a dungeness though. Look at this thing, like super purple legs, really small. Kind of looks like a dungeness, but it also doesn't. See how purple those legs are? So I think that's a different type of crab. Anyway, whatever it is, too small. Oh man, last one. Last one of the day, last snare of the day, and then two more pots. Two more hoops, I should say. Oh, come on, come on. We got one, y'all, we got one. Last one of the day, and it feels like a keeper. Please don't come off, don't come off. This feels, you know, pretty heavy. It feels like it could be a keeper, I think it's close. Whatever it is, we got a crab, for sure. Please just don't be a rock crab. Now when it hits the water, I'm going to bring it up slow, 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 slow. Oh my gosh. Really? Really? Oh, come on. This was the 12-ounce snare, so it felt a little heavy. Get out of here. All right, y'all, we're going to pull the anchor, check those two, and then call it, call it a day. Hey, we didn't get a lot of crab, but we got some. And these are really good, really good big ones. So I'm happy with the day. It was still fun trying something new. Uh, if the bite ever picks up close to shore, I'm definitely going to do the snaring thing again. Anyway, hope you guys learned something from this video, enjoyed it. Have a good one. Peace, y'all.